And then is the leptin receptor, it's not 8%, it's 3% of the cases of fat. Without any other features, you will think of leptin receptor deficiency. And then uh, melanocortin-4 receptor deficiency. And if you f find a child with obese hypogonadism, slight developmental delay, and the hair color is not conforming to the family, then you need to think of uh, your pro opio melanocortin deficiency. So these are the monogenic obesity that I was talking of. And then this is an FTA gene. Sometimes we blame the person, sometimes we blame the children that they are not being able to control their hunger or their greediness for the food. But it is the FTO gene which is there, they will go on taking. Like we blame the alcoholics, but again, that's a gene they are having that they cannot control. And then comes the ghrelin. The role of ghrelin in obesity is important because it is produced in the stomach, and this, and the pancreas and hypothalamus, and this is the ghrelin is the one which forces us to take. So one of the idea of having the bariatric surgery is that to take out a portion of this ghrelin producing area and the stomach from the stomach. And that's what the ghrelin uh, does. And prader syndrome is another disorder where the plasma ghrelin will be high. So they go on taking uh, uh, foods. I'm, I'm not going to touch, but everywhere there is probiotic. And, and Dr. Sarath Gopalan, uh, whom I admire because of his knowledge, because of his uh, delivery, and uh, he has already talked to you about obesity. Endocrine obesity is the one where most of the time the obese children are misdiagnosed. Endocrine obesity is much, much com less common, but every obese child will get a thyroxine. But it's not that common, actually. Uh, but there is a trap for that because the central obesity that you see in Cushing syndrome, you will not get in pediatric obese, uh, Cushing syndrome. It's a generalized obesity. So that needs to be taken care of that the Cushing syndrome you will miss because you expect a generalized obesity. And you know about hypothyroidism, growth hormone deficiency, pseudo-hypoparathyroidism, where your third and fourth metacarpals will be short. And then is the rohan Death syndrome, which has come up recently, is that it's a hypothalamic disorder, extreme obesity, rapid onset early obesity is the rohan Death obesity. So how do you evaluate for them? Thyroid excess T3 levels will be raised. And TSH may be just above or upper limit of normal. And that's where the problem is, that because of the obesity, they have a little bit of TSH raise, and they get the thyroxine, but without any benefit. Then the adrenal excess, you know that the pseudo casting, like we have done the dexamethasone, low dose, high dose, to di differentiate between uh, obesity, Cushing syndrome, and depressions in our school days, medical school days. And then the growth hormone levels uh, will be low. but the growth hormone level, even if it is low, but if you do the IGF-1 and IGF-BP-3, it will be normal. So that's what in endocrine you do. Again, the sleep and obesity is again, people say that if you decrease sleep, then it's a chance of obesity. There are a lot of theories behind. But what I suggest to my all my junior colleagues, that sleep well. At least eight to nine hours of sleep is necessary. Because the, the recent concept is that Whatever you learn during the day, it goes into your hard disk, into your memory during the night. And if you don't do that, you have a sh very, very short memory, and then you forget everything. So sleep is very, very important. And why? See, the, uh, because of the less sleep is the low leptin, high ghrelin, and other hormones, t sufficient time to eat, so if you are Studying, you go and open the fridge and again you take some foods. And that's the usual one, the sleep causes obesity. Now, <clears throat> what we miss, we do a lot of MRIs, but how many of you do the polysomnography? Polysomnography is a very, very important test. 
the polysomnography cost in Calcutta 9,000 rupees, MRI cost 10,000, 11,000 rupees. And with polysomnography, you will be able to see that the, how the oxygen saturation is falling, how the obstruction in the chest is happening, with how his EEG changes are there. And it's a very good indicator that if you have got changes in the polysomnography, then it's an indication that you will have to do the most probably the tonsils and adenoid to be taken off and you will have to have to decrease the obesity in whatever the way it is because it will have a long term effect on your brain. And obesity is again a body image. The studies has shown really very peculiar ones. See many of the obese people, they think they are not obese. It's just the opposite of anorexia nervosa. And this has been studied that the nine types of figures were given to uh, 2,056 females. And many of them who are obese wanted that figure only or maybe slightly fatter than that. So that means what? That means that they have a disturbed body image. So you, you will not be able to convince them that they are fat. So that is also where you need a little bit of psychotherapy that the obesity is a disturbed body image. And then uh, obesity, is it related to infections? And one of the recent concepts is that obesity is because of an infection by adenovirus 36. And this study was done by an Indian and his name is Mr. Dhirandhar. So I don't know whether it is true or false, but the name who did it is Mr. Dhirandhar. And uh, adenovirus 36, this uh, uh, obesity, it works, these viruses, they work at different levels. The canine virus towards the center, the uh, uh, on the adipose tissue is the adenovirus, and then a lot of bonavirus, hypothalamus, crappy agents, they can also be uh, infections. And then obesity is an epigenetics. I have already told you about the thrifty genes that just like asthma, obesity can the these three mouse are carrying the same gene, but they are of different size and shape and color. And that's what the epigenetics is. And last but not the least, is I don't think it's not the last, is the fetal programming. That you are destined to be fat, and that's what the Barker hypothesis is. And if you are destined to be fat, you will be fat no matter whatever you do. The problem is, suppose you are destined to be thinner because you are small for dead, and the parents want you to be fatter, then is the problem. It's something like that I had a Maruti 800 car, and after I purchased a new car, I wanted to use this car as a school van. I have increased the size, and I, I want to have more persons included in it and so it will break down very fast. So if you are destined to be thin, be thin, let them remain thin, don't try to make them fat because the fetal programming will be changed and they are the ones who will have the metabolic syndromes as you can see. So coming to the clinical part, I have already talked to you about the exogenous and endogenous obesity uh, and then we have a concept that the males have this android or the apple type of obesity, the females has got the uh, peer shaped obesity. If you accumulate fat in your pelvis, it's not going to go away. It's not going to go away. You can take off the central obesity fats, but not the peer shaped fats. And people say that if you have an apple shaped obesity, you are more prone to have diabetes and hypertension and insulin resistance. But this theory is gradually being disproved that no, it's not true. And when you examine, you examine them thoroughly. What are the things that you should look for? You should must check the blood pressure. You must check the airway obstruction. You check the axilla for the uh, acanthosis nigricans. You look at the genitalia because a lot of them may be associated with uh, genital problems. You look for the stria. You look for the tibia because of the bowing. And then I have already told you that how to diagnose this. These are the two children with barded beetle syndrome. Both of them uh, is now having retinitis pigmentosa and night vision problems. 
and this is what a pseudo hypoparathyroidism so you look at the finger fingers that whether the third and the fourth metacarpals are short or not and this is the penis of the same child the, the one it looks like this this is a buried penis so when you look you look at the penis and see that this child will be all right if you can take off the fat 